Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the press conference following the General Affairs Council. For the first time, the Council was in person here in Brussels. With me in the room, I have Secretary of State for European Affairs, Anna Paula Zakarias, and Vice President of the European Commission, Manos Shevskovic. As usual, we will start with two introductory statements from them, and then we'll open the floor to questions. So please, Secretary of State. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm very pleased because uh, today I uh, had the privilege of chairing our first physical meeting of the Portuguese, of the Portuguese presidency, uh, the General Affairs Council meeting, and, um, and I hope to see you soon also in person. Let's, uh, let's see. We had uh, five points in our agenda today. First, uh, COVID coordination, then the preparation of the special European Council on the 24th, 25th of May, then uh, next steps on the Conference on the Future of Europe, and final two AOBs, one on enlargement and another one on the relations uh, of the EU with uh, Switzerland. On the COVID-19, I think uh, there was a, a very interesting discussion today about the different points. One already towards the future, and the contract, uh, uh, the contract on with um, uh, BioNTech Pfizer uh, on uh, 1.8 billion doses uh, for 2022. Uh, this was a very uh, welcome development uh, uh, by member states, and the ministers of health uh, will have a uh, informal meeting on the on May 20 already to discuss. Uh, vaccination strategy for uh, 2022. Then uh, uh, there was a, a conversation also about the digital uh, green certificate, a uh, fundamental issue for economic recovery. The first trilogue uh, with the European Parliament uh, took place last week on the 3rd of May. This afternoon there will be a second trilogue, so we hope that uh, we will continue to make progress and to uh, approve the certificate as soon as possible. There was also um, exchange of views on the revision on, of the recommendation on the temporary restrictions of non-essential uh, travel to the EU and the possible lifting of these uh, restrictions. And also, uh, how can we revise the Council recommendation on a coordinated approach to restrictions uh, of movement inside the European Union? Um, then, uh, on the... European Council 24th, 25th, we discussed, the leaders will discuss uh, COVID-19, climate change, Russia and the EU-UK uh, trade and cooperation agreement, how to monitor. The, um, so today we focus mainly on climate change and, uh, and, and Russia. Uh, member states uh, want to, to have a good preparation of this uh, meeting and, uh, and they asked uh, for uh, a better coordination uh, in terms uh, bef before the European Commission presents the Fit for 55 uh, package. Uh, and then uh, uh, on Russia, uh, the European Council will have a debate. We didn't preclude what would be this debate. It, is, it comes at a very important uh, moment. And then uh, um, on the implementation of the trade and cooperation agreement with, uh, with the UK. On the conference on the future of Europe, uh, what we discussed is that the next steps now after the inaugural event on the conference uh, the, that took place uh, on Sunday now we need to engage uh, in uh, the organization of the national and local events, on the national citizens' panels, and uh, on the organization of the first uh, uh, plenary uh, that we hope that will take uh, place still in June. Then uh, on, on enlargement uh, was uh, a quick point because the Council will discuss this uh, at our next meeting in June. But it was uh, just to see where we are in terms of the negotiations uh, with Montenegro and Serbia. Uh, basically, here there is a clear progress uh, and also um, to see uh, where we are uh, in terms of uh, uh, the accession uh, process of uh, North Macedonia and, and Albania. 
And um, we still hope to organize this uh, intergovernmental conferences. And also, we will continue the work to complete the negotiations of the instrument for pre-accession uh, and assistance. Um, Finally, a word on the Switzerland, the EU-Switzerland situation is not very easy. Um, we welcome the Commission efforts uh, to find solution and continue, uh, we'll continue the question of uh, the new framework uh, uh, that the relations with Switzerland need to follow. Uh, it is something that we will have to continue discussing in, in the future. So this was all in all uh, the debate during our Council and I'll be uh, uh, open to your questions later on. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, let me uh, begin by thanking uh, Secretary of State uh, Anna Paula Zakarias for convening and uh, steering today's uh, General Affairs Council. She was the first physical one since the last October, and I think it was very welcome change for all of us participating uh, in, the, in the Council uh, today. I think that also thanks to that uh, positive uh, atmosphere, we covered indeed a lot of ground especially in relation to the special European Council on the 25th of May. So I'm just uh, going to add a couple of remarks uh, before we both, uh, with Anna Paula, will take your questions. The first, I updated uh, the ministers on the Commission's uh, recent actions uh, to tackle the pandemic. Uh, it includes, among other things, uh, our proposals on the non-essential travel in uh, the European Union and on uh, therapeutics, uh, but also our new contract securing 1.8 uh, billion doses of BioNTech uh, Pfizer vaccines for the two upcoming years. I also highlighted our joint work on the digital green certificate, underlying the need to get the legislative uh, process across uh, the finishing line by the, uh, by the end of this uh, uh, month. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, uh, I highlighted that uh, it is crucial to set up IT uh, and other uh, technical uh, aspects because we want uh, the member states uh, to connect uh, to the EU gateway no later than uh, by uh, the end of uh, June because we see this as a, a key development allowing us some degree of normality for this summer. We also discussed ways to further increase global access uh, to vaccines, building on the EU's uh, leading role in this respect. I think that it is uh, well known that some 200 million doses of vaccines have been exported from the EU, uh, as many as we have delivered to our own citizens. Therefore, uh, while uh, we are open to discussing new solidarity uh, proposals, uh, our priority is to ramp up the vaccine production as well as to see other unblocking exports of vaccines and uh, their components. Uh, and let me emphasize uh, the, second uh, the second point uh, as it would go a long way. On our production uh, capacities, I would like uh, uh, to uh, underscore that uh, currently we have more than 50 manufacturing sites uh, uh, in the EU uh, and it is estimated that some 10 billion doses will be produced in the course of this year. To put it into the perspective, uh, some 5 billion doses of all vaccines together uh, had been produced globally uh, before this pandemic hit. So here just we show how Europe can be and is resilient also uh, in difficult uh, uh, circumstances. And I want uh, to underline once again the EU solidarity by recalling uh, an uh, example of uh, Western Balkans, something discussed under the enlargement point uh, where we are set to provide uh, total 651,000 doses of BioNTech Pfizer vaccines to the region until August. Second very important issue, climate change, another topic that generated an interesting discussion as the Commission is uh, working full steam ahead on Fit for 55 package. The upcoming European Council should give us a targeted input on the effort uh, sharing regulation, a key element uh, for our climate legislation. We want to ensure that uh, national effort sharing targets are ambitious, cost efficient uh, and fair while paying attention to circumstances in each uh, member states. 
Thirdly, on Russia. Uh, here I underline the importance to maintain our unity vis-a-vis -vis this strategic uh, challenge, the need to strengthen resilience of Ukraine and other Eastern partners and to invest in Russian civil society and people-to-people -people contacts. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, EU-UK trade and cooperation agreement, uh, which will be also discussed uh, by the leaders uh, uh, following its uh, suc successful ratification. Here I informed ministers about our intention to hold the first meeting of the Partnership Council in early June, uh, which I see as an opportunity to tackle all sensitive issues in our post-Brexit uh, uh, relations. Uh, the General Affairs Council also took stock of uh, discussions between EU and Switzerland on the institutional framework agreement, and this was a welcome opportunity to, to debrief uh, the ministers in a greater detail because Switzerland and the EU are more than just neighbors. We have very close and deep economic and social ties supported by the free movement of people and goods between our two areas which should be preserved and further developed. And this is precisely why we seek to provide a stable, comprehensive and coherent uh, framework for these uh, relations with the institutional framework agreement. Setting up a homo homogeneous uh, legal framework between ourselves uh, will ensure a level playing field uh, and allow our bilateral relationships to prosper. In the discussions, we all concurred with this objective and we all reaffirmed our determination to finalize this uh, agreement. The EU listened carefully uh, to the Swiss uh, position on the, on the three issues for which Switzerland has expressed a wish for further clarity, wages and posted workers, state aid and free movement of persons, and we are ready to find solution. Of course, as we know from many other negotiations, the last miles are always the most complicated ones. But the EU believes that with some flexibility from both sides, we can find compromises and conclude the institutional framework agreement. This is an essential element to our relationship, without which, and this is not the EU wish, our bilateral relationship cannot be developed further in areas where we want to cooperate with Switzerland, such as health area or the electricity sector. But even our current relationship would age and thus erode without an institutional framework agreement. And we are convinced that our precious relationship with Switzerland deserves better. And therefore, we should aim for ambition and for future uh, development, which would uh, require the finalization of a framework agreement. And we are absolutely determined and ready uh, to do so. Uh, before I conclude, let me uh, applaud the commitment and uh, the leadership uh, uh, by the Portuguese uh, presidency and you, uh, Ana Paula, when it comes to the conference uh, on the future of Europe. I think we can uh, safely say that after the successful inaugural event last Sunday, we are all set uh, to further increase outreach uh, across all member states. And in this context, uh, I'm glad that our digital platform has already seen over 11,000 uh, participants and almost 500 events uh, uh, registered. So I would say let's uh, keep up uh, the pace and I hope that soon uh, we will also see the European citizens' panels taking place. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm also ready for your questions. Thank you. We'll now indeed open the floor to questions. As usual, please uh, turn on your camera and your microphone, introduce yourselves, and if possible, uh, address, say to whom you address your question to. So the first question to Eriza Zikai, please, Eriza. Yes, thank you. I have uh, Eriza Zikai. Yes. Uh, I have two questions uh, for the Secretary of State, Zakariash. The first one, uh, Secretary of State, do you see any possible compromise among member states to convene the first IGC with Albania in June. And the second question is related to election, because you know very well that the EU institutions and all member states have underlined the importance of conducting free, fair and democratic elections in Albania. Well, we see the preliminary report of OECD uh, pointing out a very serious 
irregularities and breaches, such as the control of local administrations by the government and the misuse of administrative uh, resources for the elections, uh, the leaking of sensitive uh, personal data, including political preferences of voters, and we are speaking here about one million citizens in a country with less than 3 million inhabitants, and as well, uh, widespread practices of vote buying. Now, do you think that with this very recent record, you can convince all member states to have them all on board in order to convene the first IGC with Albania? Thank you very much. Thank you, Eriza. Thank you very much, uh, Elisa, for, uh, for your questions. Um, uh, we discussed uh, today the uh, session uh, of the same time of both uh, North Macedonia and, uh, and Albania. Um, and uh, we're still trying to find a solution, a common uh, uh, possibility of uh, both uh, countries uh, to start uh, the process of a session. Um, so what can I say at this point? I can only say that the rule of law is now at the center of the process of a session and also of the process of uh, engaging uh, in, in, in the movement of, uh, you know, uh, getting closer to the European Union. And this is at the center, at the core of the new methodology. So this is an element that is fundamental and we will certainly take this into consideration when we analyze the whole process. We uh, still uh, hope that uh, we will continue the discussions and the debates to see if we can have an intergovernmental conference uh, for the accession of both countries, North Macedonia and Albania. Um, but uh, indeed, uh, we, uh, I, I have to reinforce this message that the rule of law is at the center and of the new methodology, and this has, uh, is the core of the whole accession process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President. Do you want to add anything? I can only concur with uh, uh, Anna Paula, uh, highlighting that, uh, of course, from the from the side of uh, of the Commission, uh, we are working very hard uh, uh, to make sure that uh, both the North Macedonia. Uh, and Albania would see the uh, first uh, uh, intergovernmental conference and uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I think that from the previous enlargement rounds, we know that uh, the enlargement is a uh, very, demand, uh, uh, very demanding process. Uh, as you know, we adjusted uh, the current uh, uh, negotia negotiating process to the importance uh, of the uh, rule of law and uh, to all other sensitive topics which are now first to put uh, uh, on uh, the negotiations. And I think that you know very well that we never closed the, uh, the, uh, the negotiating uh, chapter before uh, the country fully satisfies all the requirements uh, which are demanded for the, uh, from the future member states. So I think uh, that uh, all this clearly uh, would be the parameters for the future uh, enlargement negotiations and uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, I think that we need to see, uh, send a positive uh, and strong signal to the uh, Western Balkans, and I think that uh, the best, uh, best signal uh, indeed would be if we would have intergovernmental conference, and we still hope to do it under the Portuguese presidency. Thank you. Next question, Alain Franco, please, Alain. Oui, bonjour, vous m'entendez? Uh, non. <laughs> oui, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui, oui, on t'entend, oui. Bonjour. Bonjour. Une question pour Madame la secrétaire d'État, Alain Franco de la RTS, la radio publique suisse. Je voudrais savoir si euh, il y a eu euh, une vraie discussion euh, au CAG aujourd'hui sur euh, la relation bilatérale avec la Suisse. Si cette discussion a eu lieu, euh, comment pouvez-vous la résumer Est-ce qu'il y a un vrai soutien euh, de la part des États membres pour la stratégie de la Commission, qui reste euh, pour l'instant assez euh, euh, ferme vis-à-vis -vis de la Suisse laquelle est aussi euh, très ferme vis-à-vis -vis, euh, des positions de la Commission européenne. Compte tenu de cela, est-ce que les États membres pensent qu'il peut y avoir un accord alors que ça fait quand même quelques années que le dossier est complètement bloqué On pensait qu'il allait se débloquer avec la visite du président Parlemelin à Madame von der Leyen. Ce n'a pas été le cas. Merci de votre réponse. Merci Alain. 
Voilà, merci. Euh, Aujourd'hui, on n'a pas eu une vraie discussion. Il s'agissait seulement d'un point divers sur notre agenda. Alors, euh, on a discuté d'une façon très, très, je dirais, euh, très, très petite euh, en termes de dimension du débat. Euh, je dirais que les États membres, tout le monde a souligné, euh, souligné l'importance d'avoir euh, cette relation très spéciale euh, avec euh, la Suisse. C'est un pays ému, c'est un pays euh, dont on a euh, beaucoup de, de, de relations. Euh, et ça, c'est la grande question. Comment maintenir cette euh, relation bilatérale très forte et, et très importante pour tous les pays de l'Union européenne et en même temps euh, faire en sorte qu'on protège notre marché intérieur et qu'il y a euh, le, le vrai level playing field euh, qu'on doit à, avoir euh, je crois que euh, tous les États membres euh, ont bien euh, appuyé les efforts de la Commission pour, un, pour euh, avoir une solution euh, dans le contexte du, de, de cette Institutional Framework Agreement euh, qu'on qu est en train de négocier avec euh, la Suisse pendant des années et des années. Alors, euh, tout le monde veut une solution euh, et je crois que tout le monde aussi, aujourd'hui, a dit qu'il faut continuer à discuter, à avoir une vision horizontale euh, de, cette de, de, de nos relations avec euh, la Suisse et, et trouver une solution. Et tout le monde a appuyé les efforts de la Commission dans cet égard. Merci. Mr. President, I see you want to add something. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. What I would uh, underline is, uh, I would say, very, uh, it was very welcome from... from uh, uh, our side uh, that uh, the presidency uh, uh, organized debate uh, uh, under any other business on the uh, on our bilateral relationship with uh, Switzerland and I think what is very important to say that uh, most of the neighbors of the uh, Switzerland also intervened uh, in uh, this discussion and what I appreciate uh, highly is the full support we feel uh, from all member states uh, from the council uh, for the, the Commission's position in this negotiation, including, uh, uh, I would say, a very uh, clear call for the uh, continuation of these talks, for showing the flexibility. And uh, here I would underline what was coming very clearly across from both sides. Uh, and I would say that we receive uh, a lot of appreciation for, indeed, uh, uh, for already quite some time exploring all uh, possible uh, avenues uh, uh, for the clarifications, for uh, uh, the possible uh, solutions on the issues which we uh, heard from our Swiss uh, partners required further clarity, like wages and posted workers, state aid, and free movement uh, of persons. And I also, I think I can, I can say that for us, uh, the discussion between the Swiss President and President of the European Commission uh, was uh, expected to be a, a culmination point when all these negotiating and intensified efforts will culminate to the breakthrough and will uh, bring us uh, uh, very, very close uh, uh, to the agreement. This expectation uh, has not materialized, but we are not closing the door. We are ready to discuss. What we are just uh, clearly underscoring here is that, that the whole institutional framework of more than uh, 120 bilateral agreement, it's very quickly getting outdated. Some of these agreements are old decades and simply the world has evolved, the situation has changed, EU is totally different than it was uh, uh, when uh, uh, these agreements uh, have been signed. And I think it's very important uh, to remember that uh, uh, our bilateral relationship cannot be developed uh, further uh, in, in areas uh, where we want to cooperate with Switzerland, such as health area or electricity, electricity sectors, just to make the, the two examples. And if, uh, let's say, the, the, the status quo, as we have it right now, would uh, uh, continue, then we would see how our current relationship uh, would age, 
would erode uh, because we need uh, the institutional framework agreement with level playing field mechanism, with dispute settlement mechanism, and simply modernize uh, this whole uh, uh, framework for our uh, bilateral relations. And we are ready to do so. And of course, we always uh, approach our Swiss partners with extended hand and uh, with our readiness to, to talk, negotiate, and look for mutually acceptable solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, we go to Susanna Fresh. Susanna, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Susana Fresh, SIC Expresso Portugal. I have a question on the certificate, green certificate. Um, I would like to ask, uh, first of all, if the ministers uh, discussed the, the, the proposal by the European Commission to have um, free of charge uh, tests. And I also would like to understand how this is going to work for family families with children. Um, are they supposed, because we, as we know, um, children, they are not supposed to be vaccinated now, so are they supposed to have an exemption uh, uh, for children? Because, for instance, if I'm thinking about Portugal, uh, we can pay, children might be uh, requested to, or their parents to pay 100 euros per test. And if I may, um, the, the, the European Parliament is also proposing to change the name to have this EU COVID-19 certificate instead of green a digital certificate, are the ministers uh, or the countries uh, available to do that? Thank you. Thank you, Susana. Obrigada. Maybe the Secretary of State can begin. Yeah. Well, um, I I will answer in English or in Portuguese? Well, <laughs> the, 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 since the, the question was put in English, I will answer in, in English, Susana. Um, no, I, I would say that we didn't discuss any of these elements in our meeting today. Uh, I think it is important that the member states were uh, supporting the Portuguese presidency for the trilogue that uh, will take place today. The, the presidency was uh, underlying that uh, uh, during this first trilog uh, things went on very well and that uh, uh, there is at the same time in the parliament this uh, sentiment of urgency that we need to uh, conclude this uh, um, as soon as possible uh, there is also um, uh, taking place very good uh, um, discussions at technical level between the european parliament uh, and, uh, and the portuguese presidency uh, and the commission of course uh, and um, and I think that all in all, uh, I understand these uh, uh, questions of the tests uh, uh, free of charge. Uh, this, this is a very important issue for the parliament. I think we will have to come to uh, understanding at a certain moment, uh, of course, uh, in, in the course of the negotiations, uh, where this will come to the table. And um, let's see what can be done in terms of the affordability of these tests. Uh, it is very difficult for or, uh, we cannot impose a, a, a price for the tests in, in, in the European Union. It free, it's a free market. We can always uh, uh, we can only uh, try to see if uh, there is a, you know uh, a possibility of having a, a, a that the prices of the tests can can uh, be lowered. Um, and uh, on, on the name, I think there is no no there was no discussion. Um, uh, but I, I think the the name that the, the Parliament is proposing is, is a good name. <laughs> it's a good name. It's it's clearer than than the, the the one that we have now. But this this will be discussed certainly amongst the negotiators. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you very much. Uh, just uh, to give really uh, uh, as much credit as possible to the um, able chairmanship of the Portuguese presidency to make sure that. Uh, we can have this trilogue already going on. I think it was done in a, in a, a very expedient manner. It was done. It was done very fast, and I think we really used uh, the the fast track procedure to to make sure that we will uh, do our utmost for our citizens to have this uh, sort of gradual sense of uh, return back to normality in the in the summer months. And um, therefore, I, the appeal from. Uh, uh, our side was that we should all work uh, very well together, which I'm sure we will, to make sure that uh, we will complete the legislative uh, uh, work uh, as quickly as possible and uh, to call upon the attention of uh, our member states uh, uh, to complete a uh, very important technical part uh, 
of uh, the whole effort. So we would have the legislation in place, but of course, uh, for uh, the cer certificate to work, it has to be in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the smartphone, it has to be um, interoperable, and uh, it, it, it has to be possible to, to check it. So it's quite, a, I would say, a task to do it on the, on the pan-European level. And of course, uh, because uh, we know that we are we are open uh, uh, open uh, continent, and we also welcome uh, the tourists uh, uh, from other parts of the world. Therefore, I informed uh, uh, the ministers that we, of course, are talking uh, uh, to our partners in the US, uh, to our neighbours, uh, to the uh, WHO, to make sure that uh, we inform them very well about uh, not only the the legislative, uh, but also technical solutions we are bringing to the table. So also uh, uh, there will be certain global compatibility uh, of uh, uh, the certificate, because I think uh, in the end uh, it, would be, it would be needed on a wider scale. So I think so far we are really progressing very well, and I think everybody feels that this is of uh, utmost concern and priority for our citizens, and therefore I believe that we would deliver before summer. Thank you. Now one final question to Tanya Milewska. Thank you. Uh, hi, Tanya Milevska from the Macedonian News Agency. I have a question on enlargement again uh, for both of you. Um, I would like to know, first of all, uh, Secretary of State, uh, if uh, you share the position of the high rep that uh, in no way can Albania and North Macedonia be separated, that there is no such uh, thinking or discussion. And also, I would like to ask, uh, the Macedonian Prime Minister was in visit in Brussels yesterday and today. And one of his requests to his European interlocutors was that the European Union be more engaged in the process uh, of ensuring the start of negotiations for North Macedonia in June, having in mind the Bulgarian blockade. So I would like to your opinion. Are you ready to be more committed to North Macedonia? Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. What, what I can say is that uh, the Portuguese presidency uh, will, uh, during all uh, this month, uh, we, we try to push together for the two countries uh, to start the accession process uh, at the same time, uh, North Macedonia and, and Albania. And uh, we will continue to, this, uh, to do so. Uh, we, uh, we are engaging uh, with all the relevant authorities uh, on, on the conversations to see how can we support, how can the presidency uh, support uh, the, the negotiations and how can the Portuguese uh, president support the, uh, to, to have this intergovernmental, the first intergovernmental conferences for both countries still during our presidency. Um, uh, we are uh, discussing uh, yesterday, for instance, with uh, the with, uh, relevant uh, uh, North Macedonian authorities that were here in, in, the, in Brussels, and uh, we are also having conversations with the Bulgarian authorities. So uh, we do our utmost to see if uh, uh, there is still the possibility of starting this process uh, from here until June. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. I also would uh, like to reiterate that our line uh, has been uh, indeed clear for many years that North Macedonia has fulfilled all the conditions for starting accession negotiations. Uh, and uh, indeed, we would like to see the first intergovernmental conference as soon as uh, uh, possible. And our assessment uh, has uh, not uh, changed. And that's uh, our plan nothing else, uh, and it was also uh, clearly uh, conveyed uh, in the meeting uh, between the President von der Leyen with Prime Minister of North uh, Macedonia, Zoran Zaev, uh, uh, yesterday. She applauded the outstanding and impressive work of the government and expressed her hope that we could now move forward as quickly as possible, because we are very much bearing in mind the broader geostrategic situation here and we know that uh, the EU accession pass is the only credible uh, strategic option for Western uh, Balkans, uh, and, uh, uh, and that the European perspective has taken a dent during the COVID pandemic, which now we have to remedy. And therefore, uh, we've been uh, very pleased about the outcome 
of the regional tour of my colleague, uh, Commissioner Varheli, and the announcement uh, which was uh, made in the course of last days about the quite significant uh, donation uh, of uh, uh, more than 650,000 vaccines uh, which would be delivered to the region in the coming weeks and months. And I understand uh, they are aimed at first uh, for uh, uh, health uh, personnel. And we, of course, would look uh, for further possibilities, how increased uh, uh, the effort uh, in this area in the uh, upcoming months. Thank you. This is all the time we have for today. I'm sorry we cannot go through all your questions. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you also to the interpreters. Have a nice rest of the day.